When you think of fighting games, you probably think of the iconic arcade controller, or fight stick. For years, the greatest fighting game masters cut their teeth in arcades and at home with joysticks and six button setups. But for more than a decade, a challenger has waited in the shadows. It has widened its influence, drawn in new followers, and spread throughout the fighting game community. The Hitbox and a number of other leverless controllers are rapidly picking up steam and some of the best players in the world are throwing away their sticks and picking one up. The problem is that some people think that using one is, well, cheating. Dude, it's just science. You can push both buttons at the same time. An arcade stick cannot push left and right at the same time. Just looking at it, I'm like, I don't know how anyone can take a look at that and say that it is not cheating. And the EVO 2022 Street Fighter champion and many of his opponents used a hitbox. It's quickly become the hottest topic in the fighting game community. So today, we are going to take a look at the hitbox controversy. Strap yourselves in. This one's going to be a rough ride. Before we get into the video, I just want to let you all know that we have merch. If you have yet to pick up a hoodie or sweatshirt or t-shirt, well, I don't know what you're waiting for. You're definitely not too busy touching grass or anything. Anyway, so if you didn't play fighting games back in the day, you might be surprised to learn that prior to 2009, things weren't so hot. But Street Fighter 4 changed all of that. And led by the legends of old, a generation of new players stepped forward to carry fighting games into another decade. While many of those players used what was at hand, a controller or pad in many cases, some emulated the pros and bought or built a fight stick. More than anything else, fight sticks aimed to reproduce the arcade experience. But while newcomers were buying into levered joysticks, a new controversial challenger was waiting in the wing. In 2010, two brothers, Sean and Dustin Huffer, decided that a fight stick didn't have to have, well, a stick. We don't know what to call them because they're not actually sticks, they're just kind of boxes, so we, these are our boxes. Like, uh, we made, uh, we're, we're making different kinds, kind of messing around with different schemes. This one's, uh, this one's kind of the standard one for uh, Street Fighter 4. It's basically, uh, the main difference is we got arrow keys, like if you're playing on a keyboard for the, for the directional inputs. The idea was simple. What if you could use the buttons from arcade sticks to build a leverless controller? Pretty much the only reason you'd want to do this is because the travel time on a joystick is a lot longer than the travel time on like these Samwa buttons. So basically you can do your Dragon Punch, your Hadouken at light speed. But even in the comments of this video with less than 30,000 views, you can see the debate start to bubble up. Will this thing even be legal long-term? Should we be investing in something like this? But the orders started rolling in. So the brothers turned their garage into an ersatz assembly line and continued producing them. Now, some of you might be thinking, of course it's easier to press four buttons than move a lever around. Think about a stick's travel time. You're charging back, it goes forward, has to go back. Being able to hit both buttons at the same time, you are charging your next sonic boom faster than the guy who's using a stick. And it's math. It's not opinion. It's not, oh, this is harder to do on hitbox, this is easier to do. This is not opinion, this is science. Like that's been how FPS has worked on PC for a pretty long time. It's why you use WASD controls and your keyboard doesn't have a stick on it, probably. But even so, if those prototype hitbox controllers appeared all the way back in 2010, why are we only hearing about them now? Well, you see, in 2010, there were tons of brand new fighting game players who probably had the cash to buy a tried and tested fight stick, but probably weren't in the know enough to shell out for a hitbox. And while stick modding gained a lot of popularity during this time, it wasn't like people were itching to yank out their lever. The discussion simmered for a while, and some pros did switch. 
but none made more waves than the beast himself. Daigo Umehara. In 2019, Daigo, considered to be the greatest Street Fighter player of all time, decided to switch to a leverless controller, and the debate fully entered the mainstream FGC consciousness. It was another title shift for fighting games. So I guess it's time to move away from history and towards the exciting world of SOCD cleaning. And now, the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. Where there's a big fancy acronym, you can be sure that I'm not far behind. Now, one of the biggest differences between levered and leverless controllers is the ability to input left and right, or up and down, at the same time. This is called simultaneous opposing cardinal directions, or SOCD. And it's at the core of what has made the hitbox and other leverless controllers so controversial. Before hitboxes went mainstream, games often wouldn't know what to do with SOCD inputs. In Marvel 3, for example, it actually just sends both inputs to the game. So you could essentially block in both directions at once, or just break the game. Games just weren't designed to deal with these conflicting inputs, so they had to be cleaned. Essentially, either the hardware, the controller, or the software, the game, would have to actually decide what to do with them. To break it down for you, these are the three most common ways to clean those inputs. There's neutral, which doesn't send either input until one of the buttons is released, last input priority, which sends whatever the last input was, or absolute priority, which forces a specific direction when SOCD is inputted. For example, up plus down always defaults to up. And that was the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. Now, Daigo's controller was controversial partly because it used last input priority, or last win cleaning. The effects of this on Street Fighter V's Guile were immediately obvious in a game that literally counts every frame. <laughs> ま、その理論通りにできて、ま、そういう感動はありましたね。例えば、え、ま、自分の使ってるガイルだと、え、わかりやすいんですけど、普通は Capcom came out and said that the use of the controller gives the competition an advantage that does not follow the spirit of the Capcom Pro Tour before they banned it. Now, Daigo didn't get to use his leverless controller at Combo Breaker, but he committed to continue to practice both kinds of controllers, since it was allowed at subsequent tournaments. The debate never really died, but this event sparked a whole new round of awareness and arguments. Slowly but surely, all kinds of leverless controllers were explicitly made legal at major tournaments. Then, in August 2022, Daigo became an official brand ambassador for Hitbox. にどうしてもレバーだったり、え、パッ、パッドコントローラーだったりすると、タイムラグが出るんですけど、ま、ヒットボックスの場合はそのタイムラグがないですよね。で、それはま、長い目で見ればnow, there will be people in the audience who rightly reply that controllers can also do this. And yeah, it's true. If you have a controller with both a D-pad and a thumbstick, you can actually send both inputs at once. But let's be real. It's not as if banning pads is a realistic solution. The fighting game community is so niche and so small that alienating a group of it is a really bad idea. 
That shit is already on life control. So you are going to then take this small community and remove a big part of it. One more thing. The claims about reaction times are actually pretty convincing. Tokido, one of the great legendary Japanese pros, actually did a comparison of both inputs. A three to four frame difference to an elite fighting game player is an eternity. The hitbox represents an advance in efficiency, sure, but sometimes that efficiency can enable strategies that weren't considered effective before. That doesn't mean that a hitbox is better at everything. There are some inputs, like 720s and half circles, that might actually be easier on stick. And that might actually be a bigger factor when determining whether Hitbox will remain competitive in the future. If you've ever played Street Fighter 2, you probably realized that older games do very little to help you input a special move. But modern fighting games are designed to give the player a bit of leeway in terms of input. And a Hitbox is sometimes able to turn that leniency into input shortcuts. Now, if that leniency were to change, things might be different. Because the input leniency in this game is super free, all you need is a down, a forward input, a down, and a forward input. っていうコマンド表記だったんですよ。本当に1回転だったかどうかは分かんないんですけど、まあ1回転っていう表記で、それが今はま少なくともストリートファイター5に関しては4方向だけで出る。だからまあレバーを使ってれば4方向だからこう
if there is any way for you to make Thank it you. so that both sides, you know, left and right, are active at the same time, whatever it is, I recommend you bend those rules as far as they'll go, but don't break them. And to just say, okay, sure, let players do whatever they want and we'll just make up the rules as we go, feels a lot like the let the athletes cheat all they want as long as the playing field is level argument. It really is similar to a corked bat. A corked bat is banned because it allows someone who is an expert at hitting home runs to hit them even further. But it doesn't mean that if you give Rip a corked bat, hey, hit a home run, he's not gonna be able to do it. You know, it's not a miracle worker, but what it does do is it takes someone who's an expert and elevates them to a level that really the game is just not designed that way. Now, some of the discussion often revolves around the difficulty of adapting to actually using the hitbox. There's some shit that's free out of the gate, but hitbox is not intuitive. Forward, diagonal, down, SOCD, because left and right, they cancel each other out, meaning you get down individually, and then I release in that same order, so. But honestly, Top players will adapt. Winning is literally their job. Plus, while Hitbox may not seem intuitive if you're a fighting game diehard who grew up with a Sanwa in your hands, many new players coming to fighting games have experience with PC gaming. So they've probably used WASD controls. So if it's not going to be banned, fighting game developers will need to consider the existence of the Hitbox when designing future titles. If they break the game using Hitbox, to me, I'm thinking forward, Developers need to consider Hitbox in the future with their input uh, reading systems and with their with their design philosophy and their balancing. But like we said earlier, it's not all bad news for sticks. There are plenty of attempts out there to give joystick wielding boomers a competitive edge against the Hitbox Legion. But I'm gonna be honest with you all right now. Hitboxes are taking over. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is the truth. In a world with nothing but levered joysticks and controllers, it might be fair to say that the hitbox is cheating. But that world is gone, partly because developers failed to act until they were forced. And yeah, maybe people are holding on to fight sticks out of sentimentality. Either way, it's up to developers to ensure that hitbox users don't get any unfair advantages. They need to make clear, concise rulings about SOCD, mandate and enforce what they want on the software side, and be actively involved with what can and cannot be used to play their games. And for retro games, which won't have software side cleaning, we need to figure out how exactly to approach Hitbox as a community. Maybe that means fight sticks will slowly disappear or be relegated to museums. Or maybe it means that they'll get some extra help. But what it almost certainly means is that, like it or not, hitboxes are here to stay. So this is Colton's section or mine? It's gotta be Colton's. Yeah, 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 okay, okay, perfect. I think this is a rare case. I think what happened is I think Josh wrote the section because it's so f***ing turbo virgin that only Josh, only Josh would know this. Daigo didn't get to use his leverless controller at Combo Breaker. But he continued, how did I end up on combo breaker? Went full Midwest there. 